loving-kindness, or metta in the Pali language, is one of four foundational practices taught by the Buddha, known collectively as the heavenly abodes or the divine abodes. And they are loving-kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. All of these are rigorous meditation practices in their own right, used for the most part to cultivate samadhi, or one-pointed concentrated attention, out of which the powers of these evoked qualities emerge, transfiguring the heart. But the essence of all these practices is actually contained and is accessible within all the mindfulness practices we have already touched on. Even so, just naming these qualities of heart explicitly and making their role explicit in our practice may help us to recognize them when they arise spontaneously during mindfulness practice, as well as to incline the heart and mind in their direction more frequently, especially in difficult times. In fact, these practices, and in particular loving-kindness, can often serve very practically as a necessary and skillful antidote to mind states such as ferocious rage, which may, at the time of their arising, be simply too strong to attend to via direct observation unless one's practice is very developed. At such times, formal loving-kindness practice can function to soften one's relationship to such overwhelmingly afflictive mind states so that we can avoid succumbing completely to their energies. It makes them more approachable and it makes them less intractable. But with practice, direct observation itself, on its own, as we've been practicing it in the other guided meditations in this series and with the Series 1 and the Series 2 CDs, becomes the embodiment of loving kindness and compassion all by itself and is capable of embracing any mind state, however afflictive or toxic, and in the seeing of it and the knowing of it, in open-hearted, non-reactive, non-judgmental presence, we can see into the nature of the anger or grief or whatever it is, and in the seeing, in the embracing of it, in the knowing of it, as we have seen, it attenuates, weakens, evaporates, very much like touching a soap bubble, or like writing on water. What emerges in such moments is nothing less than loving-kindness itself, arising naturally from extended silence, without any invitation, because it's never not already here. So, in a dignified sitting posture, or lying down, whatever you prefer, as you feel ready, bringing your awareness to the breath, and the body as a whole breathing, and resting here for a period of time, establishing a relatively stable platform of moment-to-moment -moment awareness, riding on the waves of the breath. And when you feel comfortable, resting with the flowing of your breathing in this way, picturing in your mind's eye, to whatever degree you find it possible, someone in your life who loves you, or who loved you unconditionally, evoking and giving yourself over to feeling the qualities of the selfless love and kindness they accord you or accorded you, and the whole aura or field of their love for you. Right here, right now, breathing with these feelings, bathing in them, resting in the warmth and radiance of their heartfelt embracing of you, just as you are or were. Drinking in the experience that you are unequivocally and unconditionally loved, and accepted as you are, without having to be different, without having to be worthy of their love, 
without having to be particularly deserving. In fact, you may not feel particularly worthy or deserving. That does not matter. It is, in fact, irrelevant. The relevant fact is that you were or are loved. Their love is for you, just as you are, for who you are now, already, and perhaps always have been. Allowing your own heart to bask in these feelings, to be cradled in them, entrained into them, to be rocked moment by moment in the swinging, rhythmic beating of the loving heart of another, and in the cadences of your own breathing, allowing your heart to be held and bathed in this way by the warmth of this radiant, pulsing field of loving-kindness. And if you encounter some difficulty in bringing to mind or conjuring up such a person from memory in this moment, then seeing if you can imagine someone treating you in that way and imagining with great vividness the feelings of love and kindness and regard. And that can actually serve equally well in this practice. Now, as you feel ready, and whenever you feel ready, seeing if you can become the source as well as the object of these same feelings. In other words, taking on these feelings for yourself as if they were your own rather than those of another. Lingering as best you can with the rhythmic beating of your own heart, cradling in your own heart these feelings of love and acceptance and kindness for yourself beyond judgment of any kind, just basking in feelings of loving-kindness akin to the all-loving embrace of a mother for her child, where you are simultaneously both the mother and the child, resting here in these feelings as best you can, from moment to moment, bathing in your own kind regard, your own complete acceptance of yourself as you are right here in this very moment, letting this feeling be self-sustaining, natural, in no way forced or coerced. Even tiny tastes of it are balm and succor for all the negativity and self-criticism and self-loathing that can lie beneath the surface of our psyches. In resting here in this field of loving-kindness, this embrace of loving-kindness, 
you may find it useful to whisper to yourself inwardly the following phrases or hear them being whispered to you by the wind, by the air, by the breath, by the world, or even asserted more strongly with great feeling, may I be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May I be happy and contented. May I be healthy and whole to whatever degree possible. May I experience ease of well-being. Gently, at your own pace, over and over, inwardly whispering, inwardly hearing, feeling, sensing, affirming, may I be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May I be happy and contented. May I be healthy and whole to whatever degree possible. May I experience ease of well-being. May I be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May I be happy and contented. May I be healthy and whole to whatever degree possible. May I experience ease of well-being. At first, it may feel artificial to be saying such things to yourself, or even thinking them. After all, who is this I who is wishing this? And who is the I who is receiving these wishes? Ultimately, both vanish into the feeling of being safe and free from harm in this moment, into the feeling of being contented and happy in this moment, the feeling of being whole in this moment, since you already are whole, the feeling of resting in ease of well-being, far from the dis-ease and fragmentation we endure so much of the time. This feeling, this very feeling, is the essence of loving-kindness. But, you might object, if this is a selfless practice, why am I focusing on myself, on my own feelings of safety and well-being, 
on my own happiness? One response would be, because you are not separate from the universe that gave rise to you, and so are as worthy an object of loving kindness as anything else or anyone else. Your loving kindness cannot be either loving or kind if it does not include yourself. But at the same time, you don't need to worry. It's not limited to yourself because the field of loving kindness is limitless. If you like, you can think of the loving kindness practice as we've been engaging it up to this point, on a relative level at least, as tuning your instrument before you play it out in the world. In this case, tuning the instrument is itself a huge act of love and kindness, not a means to an end. Once you have established a fairly stable field of loving kindness around yourself and have lingered here for a time in the feeling of being held and cradled and rocked in its embrace, you can intentionally expand the field of the heart just as we sometimes expand the field of awareness in the mindfulness practice. We can expand the field of loving kindness around our own heart and our own being, inviting other beings, either singly or en masse, into this growing embrace. This is not always so easy to do, and so it's helpful to start with one person for whom you naturally harbor feelings of loving kindness and only if you care to explore it. Otherwise, you can simply keep embracing yourself as the recipient of your own love and kindness, either using the phrases we are already using or modifying them to suit yourself. So if you are open to expanding the field of loving kindness out from your own heart and your own body and your own being, in your mind's eye, and in your heart, evoking for now the feeling or image of an individual, a person for whom you have great affection, someone you are close to emotionally. Can you hold this person in your heart with the same quality of loving kindness that you have been directing towards yourself? Whether it is a child or a parent, a brother or a sister, a grandparent, or other relative near or distant, a close friend or a cherished neighbor, singly or together, breathing with them or him or her in your heart, holding them in your heart, imagining them in your heart as best you can, because just to let you know, this practice is so intrinsically powerful that none of the imaging of yourself or others needs to be very vivid for it to be hugely effective, and wishing them well. May she, he, they be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May she, he, they be happy and contented. May she, he, they be healthy and whole to whatever degree possible. May she, he, they experience ease of well-being. Lingering moment by moment in the field of loving kindness within your own heart with these phrases as you voice them silently to yourself and even more with the feeling behind them, repeating them in order over and over, not mechanically, not like a mantra, but mindfully, with full awareness, knowing what you're saying, feeling the intention behind the feeling, the intention and feeling behind each phrase. May she, he, they be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May she, he, or they be happy and contented. May she, he, or they be healthy and whole to whatever degree possible. May she, he, or they experience ease of well-being.
from here, whenever you're ready, if you care to, you can invite into the field of the loving heart those for whom your relationship is more neutral, or even people you don't know at all, or who you have only heard of secondhand. Friends of your friends, for instance. And again, cradling him, her, or them in your heart, wishing them well. May she, he, or they be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May she, he, or they be happy and contented. May she, he, or they be healthy and whole to whatever degree possible. May she, he, or they experience ease of well-being. If you find the mind wandering or you find yourself struggling at a certain point, just as in the cultivation of mindfulness, just noticing what's going on in the mind, perhaps feeling the sense of struggle in maybe even maintaining your focus or your concentration, and simply over and over again, including yourself in the field of loving kindness and coming back to the phrases whispered, spoken inwardly to yourself, resting in the feeling radiating out of those phrases. And underneath that, out of your heart, moment by moment by moment, with whoever it is, singly or together, to whom you are sending loving kindness. And from here, if you care to, you can once again expand the field of awareness to include one or more individuals who are actually problematic for you in one way or another, with whom you share a difficult past, perhaps, who may have harmed you in one way or another, who for whatever reason you consider to be more of an adversary or an obstacle than a friend. This does not mean that you are being asked to forgive them for what they may have done to hurt you or to cause you or others harm. You are simply recognizing that they too are human beings 
that they too have aspirations, that they too, in all likelihood, desire to be happy and safe. So as best you can, and only to the degree that you feel ready for it, or at least open to experimenting with it, extending loving kindness to them as well for all the difficulties and problems lying between you. May she, he, or they be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May she, he, or they be happy and contented. May she, he, or they be healthy and whole to whatever degree possible. May she, he, or they experience ease of well-being. Just as with the cultivation of mindfulness, where we can rest with one object of attention or expand the field to include varying levels of objects of attention, so in this loving-kindness practice, we can linger for days, weeks, months, or years at differing levels of the practice, all of which are equally valid and equally healing, and all of which ultimately include each other. So if you wish to cultivate loving-kindness and direct it only toward yourself now, in this period of practice or for many, many periods of practice, that is perfectly fine, and you can just keep and sustain that dimension of the loving-kindness practice underneath my voice and what I'm saying. Or if you care to direct loving-kindness only toward those who you know and love, or even one person over and over again, that is just fine too. Any level at all at which you care to cultivate and direct loving kindness is fine, is perfect, and ultimately embodies all the others anyway. For over time, it's likely since your own capacity for loving, whether you know it or not, is infinite, that is simply the nature of love, that it's limitless, and therefore actually an infinite supply, that you may find yourself naturally drawn to invite more and more beings into the field of loving-kindness, radiating from your own heart and your own being in all directions, inwardly and outwardly. Or you may find that at times they just slip in unbidden somehow. This is interesting to note. If you're not consciously inviting them in, how come they're showing up anyway? And how are they getting in? Hmm. Maybe your heart is bigger and wiser than you think. In the spirit of the boundlessness of the heart and of love itself, we can expand the field of loving kindness even further to include our neighbors and neighborhood, our community, our state, our country, the entire world, if you will. You can include your pets, all animal life, all plant life, all life, the entire biosphere, all sentient beings. 
You can also get very specific and include specific people, even political leaders, in the field of your loving kindness, difficult as that may be if you differ strongly with them and find yourself judging them and even their basic humanity harshly. All the more reason for including them. Being human, they are worthy of loving kindness and perhaps will respond to it by softening in ways your mind cannot possibly imagine. And perhaps the same goes for you as well. You can also specifically include in the field of loving-kindness all those less fortunate than yourself, who are exploited at work or at home, all those who are imprisoned justly or unjustly, all those who are at the mercy of their enemies, all those who are hospitalized or sick or dying, all those who are caught up in chaos, who are living in fear, who are suffering in any way, shape, or form. Whatever brought them to this point in their lives, just as we do, they all want to experience ease of well-being rather than dis-ease and fragmentation. Just as we do, they all want to be happy and contented. They all desire to be whole and healthy. They all desire to be safe and free from harm. So we recognize this way in which we are all united in our common aspiration to be happy and not to suffer, and we wish them well. May all beings, near and far, be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May all beings, near and far, be happy and contented. May all beings, near and far, be healthy and whole to whatever degree possible. May all beings, near and far, experience ease of well-being. May all beings, near and far, be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May all beings, near and far, be happy and contented. May all beings, near and far, be healthy and whole to whatever degree possible. And may all beings, near and far, experience ease of well-being. And it need not stop here. Why not include the entire earth in the field of loving kindness? Why not embrace the very earth that is our home, that is an organism in its own right, that is in a sense one body, a body that can be thrown off balance by our own actions, conscious and unconscious, in ways that create huge threats to the life it nurtures and to the intelligences embedded within all aspects of that life, animal and plant and mineral, that interact so seamlessly in the natural world. And so, 
we can expand the field of the loving heart even further, the field of our loving kindness, once again, to include this time the planet as a whole, and out beyond that, the entirety of the universe in which our Earth is merely an atom, and we not even a quark. May our planet and the whole universe be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May our planet and the whole universe be happy and contented. May this planet and the whole universe be healthy and whole. May our planet and the whole universe experience ease of well-being. May our planet and the whole universe be safe and protected and free from inner and outer harm. May our planet and the whole universe be happy and contented. May our planet and the whole universe be healthy and whole. May our planet and the whole universe experience ease of well-being. It may seem a little silly, even animistic, to wish for the happiness of the planet or the whole universe. But why not? In the end, whether we are talking about individual people who are problematic for us, or the entire universe, what is most important is that we incline our own heart toward inclusion rather than toward separation. In the end, whatever the consequences for others or for the planet or the universe or any levels in between, the willingness on our part to extend ourselves in this way, literally and metaphorically, to extend the reach of our own heart, has profound consequences for our own life and for our own capacity to live in the world in ways that embody wisdom and compassion, loving kindness and equanimity, and ultimately that express the joy inherent in being alive and the boundless joy inherent in freeing ourselves from all our conditioning of mind and heart and the suffering it brings with it. To do so in the loving-kindness meditation is to practice the heart's liberation here and now, here and now, and now and always. No doubt the world benefits and is purified from even one individual's offering of such intentions. The relationships within the lattice structure of reality and the web of all life slightly shifted through our openness and through our willingness to let go of any rancor and ill will we might have been harboring 
however justified we may think it is. At the same time, by our faithfulness to such a practice and to the deepest nature of our own hearts, we, who have arisen out of the earth, out of the life stream, out of the universe, out of mystery really, are somehow blessed and purified and made whole by the generosity of the gesture of loving-kindness practice in and of itself and its effects on the heart that for a moment at least is no longer willing to harbor rancor and ill will without at least holding that too in awareness with compassion. We who choose to practice loving-kindness formally and informally, even if just a little bit, are always its first, but by no means its only, beneficiaries. So, in the final moments of our time together, resting here in the radiance and luminosity of your own intrinsic beauty, your own intrinsic love, your own intrinsic kindness, whether you are using words or not, at whatever level you choose or intuitively are drawn to, radiating loving kindness inwardly and outwardly, near and far, yourself whole and part of larger and larger levels of wholeness, fully embedded in all life and in your own life. And as this formal period of practicing together comes to an end with the sound of the bells, affirming inwardly that this practice can be nourished on a regular basis if you are drawn to keep it alive and vibrant, just as can all the other practices we have been engaging in together, and affirming for yourself and for others, if you like, the old Navajo saying, which I extend to you now, may you walk in beauty, may you and all beings, near and far, walk in beauty. <laughs>